Welcome to Scripturology. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different than our normal lesson. While we were doing our series on the Gospel of John, we couldn't help but notice that the whole second half of the book recorded Jesus ministering to and teaching primarily his 12 disciples, well, 11 after Judas left. Jesus put his most concentrated effort into a select group of men. Several times in the course of our study, we mentioned the importance of having at least a friend or two into which you can pour and invest yourself, and also from which you can receive the benefit of exhortation, encouragement, sometimes correction if we need it. I used to take for granted that every Christian woman had that kind of friend, but I've learned that's not the case. Many women are just too busy with their lives to invest in a deep friendship, and many just don't think they have the opportunity. On our program today, we are going to be discussing what an authentic friendship looks like for Christian women in the 21st century and how to cultivate one. Joining me today is uh, April Wong Loi Singh. Now, April has worked with female graduate students at Moody Theological Seminary in Chicago, Illinois, where her husband is a professor. April's responsibilities there included weekly mentoring sessions with uh, women there for the purpose of establishing spiritual goals and working through life issues. She helped them evaluate themselves and held them accountable to make change. But that experience is not her most significant credential for talking about relationships among Christian women. What makes April really special is that she knows how to be the kind of excellent godly friend we're going to be talking about. How do I know that? Because April has been my lifelong friend. Seriously, we've been friends since we were about three or four years old. That's over 45 years. We grew up two houses away from each other, so we were neighborhood friends. I came to know the Lord because April invited me to vacation Bible school at her church when I was seven years old. Through the many years of our friendship, we have seen the good, the bad, and the ugly of each other. And we have, you know, ridden life's highs and lows and joys and sorrows with one another. And April helped me start Scripturology. So welcome to the Scripturology program, my friend. Well, thank you. Okay, Glad April, to be here. April, you and I started off our friendship as just neighborhood buddies because by happenstance we happen to live on the same block. In our study of the Gospel of John, we saw Jesus being very intentional about choosing his friends. What do you think about that? Is that like an example we should follow, that we should just take the, the women as friends who come across the conveyor belt of our life? Well, you do have different times in your life where you may not have uh, the, your, your favorite friend choice available but no I don't think you need to just accept that conveyor belt if you will I I believe that Jesus was intentional everything we 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 notice about him is that inner circle is very intentional who he had near him so we are we are called to live a deeper life deeper than just the busyness in in our everyday schedules it means being intentional, going deeper, and, and breaking away and finding time to, to reflect. And that's what I think we're going to talk about today. Yeah, it, there's a verse in 1 Corinthians 15, 33 that says, Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. So often we get the idea mm -hmm. that we are going to be the influencers. We are Christian women, and we are going to influence these friends that come into our lives, the unsaved people, and we're going, we're going to um, lead them to the Lord. If they are already Christians but young, we are going to disciple them and grow them up. Um, when we may not be aware that they have no intention to want to grow up. Mm -hmm. And when we, in the course of spending time with them, according to this verse, according to scripture, they rub off on mm -hmm. us just mm -hmm. as much, if not more, than we rub off on them. So there's a risk in just taking whoever happens to come along and not being intentional. 
one of the questions that comes to mind if we think about being intentional with our friendships is thinking about the purpose of friends in our lives. And I don't think most people have ever thought about friends serving a purpose, especially a deeper purpose. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say should be the purpose of intentional friendships in our lives? Oh, the purpose. The purpose is <laughs> to, see, to see the blind spots. And we all have blind spots. And uh, we, we can be believing that we are right on target, that we're living godly lives, lives of righteousness and reflection. I'm reading my Bible every day and I'm applying it. But it, it truly, it takes another human being who's close up to you to help, help me call out the, the blind spots and to, to really cause me to reflect and go, and go deeper. So I'd say that's the purpose of, of the spiritual friend. So they're calling us to be Christ-like, calling us to be mm -hmm. better people than we happen to be. Okay, so now you and I had an instance of that this morning where you called out a blind spot in my life. Okay, tell on me. You can share with our scripturology viewers. What did you call out in my life? Well, it, you know, we have to differentiate here between behavior and attitude and, and motives. So uh, um, often when a person uh, tells, gives me advice, gives me advice or, t or gently suggests what I should be doing in a decision in my life, whether I asked for it or not, I will, I will just simply put it aside and say, mm, that's just their opinion. I don't really, really <laughs> need to heed this. But what I'm talking about is something is a little is deeper. It's it's heart issues. So what is your question? Okay, so what you challenged me to do was really a behavior it issue was. that I had. That April took a risk in pointing out to me hurt her feelings when I would spend the night at April's house. I would want to be creeping out of her house in the morning while everyone was sleeping because I don't want to wake everyone up. And April let me know, and no uncertain terms, that that hurt her feelings. She wanted me, what I thought was protecting her and being considerate. She said, you know, I, I miss the joy of being able to give you that final mm -hmm. greeting. So, of course, I threatened her that I would bring a bucket of ice water with me next time, and I will wake her up with that so she would not forget that I had... Being the extremist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> being the extremist. That <laughs> okay, now, most likely... We don't have 12 disciples hanging about us and, and being mm -hmm. our friends because life is just so busy. Mm -hmm. It's hard for us to uh, have the time to invest in that many people. I mean, the thought occurs to me, even Jesus whittled down his 12 to having three right. that were in the inner circle with him. But as scripturology viewers maybe have been thinking about this idea mm -hmm. of being intentional about friendships. Maybe they've been thinking that, you know, going through their head and thinking, well, who do I have as friends? Are these friends that call me to step up? Are they, are they calling me to be more Christ-like? And they have to answer honestly, no. I mean, we have a good time, you know, with each other. We have great fellowship mm -hmm. times. We have a lot of fun, but they're not challenging me to grow spiritually. If our viewers would look with intention for a friend that would mm -hmm. come alongside them, what qualities mm -hmm. should they be looking for? That's a good question because, and, and I will say, I think it's a foreign concept to our daughters mm. to have a friend on this level. I have an 18-year-old daughter, and, uh, and, and I encourage her to look for spiritual friends. And she may not, she's, she's involved in her campus, uh, with, with, she goes to church, she has a group there. She goes to a campus ministry, she goes there. But she told me, Mom, I don't, I don't connect with anybody here. I don't, I don't really like these people. <laughs> They're not friends that I would choose. But I've encouraged her to look for a spiritual friend, someone that, that is transparent, someone who uh, obviously is approachable. You yeah. would feel that you could be share things of the heart with her right. but uh the the person needs to to be living a, a godly life following christ obviously there's a maturity there right someone who is hungry to not only to know god but to 
to to change to change yeah someone who is not satisfied with just living the routine yeah and so I uh, looking for a person it would be a, a person who is uh, someone who lives a reflective life and goes deeper I would say too, to it, maybe to encapsulate that Mm -hmm. Look for someone you would aspire to be like, someone who mm -hmm. inspires you. Uh, my family has moved around the country several times, and I just, mm -hmm. I'm a bottom line person. I like to cut through the chase. Sometimes it's difficult for me to, to spend, you know, I don't want to move somewhere, be friendless, and have to spend two or three years trying to identify who would be that godly person. So I get myself in a Bible study and ask the women there. Who is the most godly woman here? Okay, that's not a question you put out there. You know, you ask behind the scenes mm -hmm. and try to identify who is it that the other women in that group look up to and respect um, for their godliness, for their teachability themselves. Because mm -hmm. I think we've all seen people that appear to be godly, but they're not humble about it. Right. You know, they, they parade their godliness. And mm -hmm. I just... I need somebody who will be real with me and will also let me be real with them and will take the risk of telling me uh, my stuff, calling me out on my bad behavior, my wrong ideas, um, things like mm -hmm. you did this morning, but deeper than that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was a superficial mm -hmm. issue that just happened this morning, and that's why it's coming to mind. Proverbs 27.6 says this, Faithful are the wounds of a friend profuse are the kisses of an enemy. We can all find those girlfriends who will give us kisses, you know, oh, sure. that will just, oh, poor baby, when we tell our problems to, rather than taking the risk mm -hmm. and pointing out, well, you might want to think about mm -hmm. this, because I've identified an area in your life, or it seems to me, could that be true, that you really have a bad attitude about this that needs to be adjusted by the Holy Spirit within mm -hmm. you? So we need people to take those risks with us. Okay, so if I ask somebody, if I canvass the church, you mm -hmm. know, for a person, and, I, and I've identified somebody that I want to get close with, that I want to have an intentional friendship with, you know, how do I become friends with them? How do I start that process with them? I mean, before you answer that, I just have to tell you, and I'll repeat the question again. I saw a bumper sticker this past week that said, you can't make someone else love you. Mm -hmm. All you can do is stalk them and hope for the best. <laughs> you know, so how, if we stalk someone, how do we initiate that friendship with mm -hmm. them. I think what you're talking about is something where they're, they're local, where they're, where they're in close proximity to you. Right. I mean, nowadays we have everything at our disposal. We can, uh, we have our telephones, we have our, our cameras, we have all sorts of things that we can, can, can keep connected. But where do you begin? Hopefully that person is someone where it's a natural configuration in your routine, in your, in your mm -hmm. weekly routine. I would I would suggest to anyone to 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 try to make regular regular times to, together to meet would you, together. Would you flat out ask them? Would you be my friend? You know, it's like Mister Rogers. Won't inviting, you be my neighbor? <laughs> it's inviting someone. It, it I, and I'm not talking even about a friendship that is under the the definition of what maybe everyone else thinks a friendship is, because it may not be someone that you would chum with. Yeah. It may not be, but you know that person is the person you would go to when, for things of the heart. Yeah. We'll pick up right on that okay. thought right after this brief break. We're coming to the end of our current study series, but we're also coming to the end of our fiscal year. The Scripturology program is the primary project of a nonprofit organization I began called Bridesmaid Ministries. In case you ever wondered, the name Bridesmaid came about because our desire is to help prepare the Bride of Christ through discipleship. Who helps the bride? The Bridesmaid. Well, if you're also planning the end of your fiscal year, as the IRS encourages all to do, would you consider a gift of any amount to help support our discipleship program? All contributions are tax deductible and can be sent to the address on the bottom of your screen. 
So before the break, we were talking about how do you go about intentionally finding that person you've identified and getting them to come alongside you. And was that, well, one thing you could do is you could just flat out ask them, is there anything we can do to help ourselves? You, you ask them directly and, and perhaps they don't even have time for one more relationship in their life. So and you have to be prepared to do. hear no. You do. But because this is so important, mm -hmm. you want to take that risk mm -hmm. and ask. Um, I also have a daughter. She's a little bit older. And a couple of years ago, she was telling me there was a woman in, in uh, her church. She's married. And a young married woman, it feels like she needs someone, an older someone, to come alongside her. And she asked a woman if they would mentor her. And the woman said no. Mm -hmm. And it just really hurt my daughter's feelings that she kind of just let it go. She, she didn't want to risk, at least at that point, putting herself out there again. So we do need to, to prepare right. ourselves for that. Right. And, and sometimes the most obvious person in the group is overtaxed, has too many people in their life. And so you, you need to go back and ask, maybe there's someone here, Lord, that you have for me that, that I don't notice. But, but it would be a good fit for me at this time. Okay, so for those who are not used to having these kind of intentional, deep, challenging relationships, how do we start with that? How do we just, what's the, maybe we just need to know the benefit of having those relationships and because there's risk to bearing our souls. How do we get ourselves over that risk of just bearing our souls? It is a risk, but you need common ground together and you need to have exposure over time. And we can, we can text each other, we can phone each other, we can Facebook, Skype, the whole thing. But there's something about being in close proximity and living life and seeing the pressures together. Yeah. So whatever that is, it, it certainly helps that you have a common hobby together yeah. or something because, because it, it, it's a natural, a natural time to, to share. Yeah. So. But if a relationship was more formal and you were looking mm -hmm. for a mentoring relationship and say it is an older woman and you know, you're at different stages of life, that can still work mm -hmm. and you can still, I, I think you just look for the purpose of that relationship is to be transformed. So you have just got to jump in and risk burying yourself, risk saying, you know, I have these thoughts, I struggle with these thoughts, and putting yourself mm -hmm. out there. Because you've done your homework in the beginning, You're looking, you've looked for that godly person right. that you can trust. But look, look, I will say, from the outside, we all look good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we all look good. Some of us look I mean, better. her hair looks good, she's got her family together, the whole thing. Um, but it, I'm not talking about the general behavior and the moral upright living that everybody in your neighborhood is, is doing. I, what we're talking about here is things of the heart and it is much, much deeper. It is taking it to another level. Okay, yeah. let's put mm -hmm. ourselves, we've been talking about seeking out being, um, seeking out having a godly friend, but that's a two-way street. We could also be a godly friend to someone else. Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Is it ever appropriate to cut someone off who doesn't seem to be interested mm. in transformation as much as they are interested in just having friendship therapy? I just want to feel better. I just want to relieve my guilt. I just want to unload, but I'm mm. not really interested in changing. Mm. Is it, would it be unchristian to cut someone off? Well, I don't know if I want to go with the unchristian part, but I will <laughs> say that there are people that they, that people in the past have asked me through the years, they've, they've come to me and asked me to meet with them on a, on a structured basis. Um, our, our children were the same age. It was a certain time in life where I was. And so I met her weekly, uh, regularly. And we would read the, the Bible and we would pray and she'd share the things from her life with me. But soon I noticed that she was not changing. What she was looking for was to release her guilt. She knew that she was living, um, she was disobeying God. She had decided to live with someone during this time, mm. and, and she, we, we spoke of it, and we talked about it. 
I, I showed her in scripture. I shared with her. We, I loved her all along the way, but she did not change. She was, she was bound to that and, and didn't want to, to change. There is this idea that a friend accepts you, a true friend will accept you no matter what. Mm -hmm. And you had something on your Facebook page recently. You said, that is garbage. A friend is not just to accept us where we are, mm -hmm. but they are to encourage us to step up and to grow and to change. And sometimes it's more of a favor to somebody mm -hmm. to say, this is too important to both of us. And, when, and if you have to step away from a friendship, they may say, this is serious. And if they do and they come back, wonderful. You have another opportunity to build and invest mm -hmm. in that person. And if they don't, apparently, I guess maybe we're wasting our time anyway. And that can seem harsh, but if our purpose is discipleship, if we are being intentional, we don't mm -hmm. want to be wasting our time. We want to be spreading the seed on the fertile ground, so mm -hmm. to speak. Mm -hmm. You talked about generational differences when you mentioned Emily and your daughter mm -hmm. and not knowing, you know, the friendships on a level that we have. I'm looking back a generation and, and thinking back to our mother's generation. I do not recall that my mother ever had a single girlfriend. I mean, her life was her mm -hmm. family, and she seemed fine with that. You know, I guess I would, would say... Is there anything wrong with that? Is there anything wrong with just keeping to ourselves? I mean, when I say family, I mean kids. I mean, she didn't even have sisters. She mm -hmm. just had two brothers. She didn't have sisters to share with. What do you think mm -hmm. about isolating ourselves in our families? That's a good question because I have my, my mother that lives with us also. So I have three generations in the home. But my mother, uh, she is separated from from her entire family, which they are 12 hours away by car, and she has no one from her childhood, no friends, no, f no sisters, mm. if you will. But if, if someone's in that situation, I would, I would, I would strongly recommend to, and, and, and advise you, you, know, you don't need to stay there. Mm. You don't need to stay isolated. God didn't, doesn't want us to be an island. He wants us to be in community. And if you're home alone and you have no contacts with, with anyone from the outside world, I would say start praying. Yeah. Ask God for that spiritual friend. I just talked to my mother this morning and I, I asked her, Mom, what do you think a, a spiritual friend is? And she, she paused for a long moment and she said, that would be wonderful. That would be wonderfully beautiful to have a spiritual friend. And, and she thought about it, that that would make her, the, the friendship grow so much quick, yeah. more quickly. Yeah. So. There's a verse in Proverbs, Proverbs 18:1 that mm -hmm. says this, whoever isolates himself seeks his own desire. He breaks out against all sound judgment. The NIV says mm -hmm. he pursues selfish ends, um, where the ESV has said he seeks his own desire. He's being selfish in isolating himself by not wanting that accountability because not having that accountability of a spiritual friend just lets you do your own thing. There is nobody calling you on your stuff. So how do you grow? A favorite verse of my husband's and mm -hmm. mine, in fact, I had it inscribed in his wedding band, is Proverbs 27, 17, which says, as iron sharpens iron, mm -hmm. so one man sharpens another. It's not the most romantic verse no. <laughs> there is, but it's the idea that, well, that was my hope for our marriage, is that mm -hmm. we would be helpers to each other and we would make each other better people. Mm -hmm. And the danger is if we isolate ourselves, who is doing that for us? So there really is a spiritual danger because if we are not moving forward, the chances are we are moving mm -hmm. backward. So mm -hmm. that, that challenge of having somebody is so important. Okay, We talked a little bit about um, the scripturology viewer who may be at home and say, well, that's nice, and I'm all for having a friend like that, but I'm homebound. I don't have the opportunity to, to get out mm -hmm. to church. Uh, what do I do? So you mentioned... First off, start praying. Start praying right away. Um, you may be in a season of your life where 
you, you are completely isolated. And um, you may be of the personality that you prefer to be alone. <laughs> Some people like that. They would rather not have a, another person in their personal stuff, in their personal life. But again, God doesn't want us to be alone. He, he gave us each other so that we can encourage one another in these areas, no matter how old we are. <laughs> when I was looking at, in scripture at what does the Bible have to say about friendship, I came across a funny verse that I want to share to you. It's Proverbs 19.6. It says, many seek the favor of a generous man, and everyone is a friend to a man who gives gifts. And I thought, oh, I guess one solution is we could buy our friends, <laughs> according to Proverbs. The chances that somebody truly lives in isolation all by themselves is rare, especially if you're a homebound person. You mm -hmm. are going to need somebody mm -hmm. in your life, whether it's a caregiver. So maybe you do have to take the person who's on the conveyor belt of your life, and, and you can't be so intentional. Mm -hmm. But you can be that friend. Mm -hmm. You can be challenging them, asking them to challenge you and, and pour into your life and... Just love each other. You know what it is, Alexandra? It, you need someone in your life that asks the hard questions. And it's not going to be comfortable all the time. But we, we need to li live a life where we, we, we want those hard questions asked. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it seems like our, our time has just flown, flown by today, and I've appreciated so much having you as a guest on Scripturology today. I hope you've learned something from our discussion today of building godly friendships. I know that this was kind of a different type of Scripturology today, mm -hmm. but in studying the book of John, it just struck me how intentional he was about his friendship. So we always hear that Jesus hung out with sinners, you know, but those were people that came along his life, and mm -hmm. you don't see multiple um, uh, encounters with the same person, but you see multiple encounters. Now, I'm not saying at all, please don't get the idea I'm saying that, you know, we don't deal with sinners. But in addition to the practical mm -hmm. ideas that we've shared today and the advice that we've given, I hope that you will remember mm -hmm. two key points from this program. Because friendships have such an influence on us, we cannot afford to be willy-nilly about investing in them. We have to be intentional about them. The second thing I hope you'll remember is that godly friendships all have a single purpose, no matter who they're mm -hmm. between, and that is to help us grow mm -hmm. in Christ-likeness. Mm -hmm. You know, remember to ask yourself if you are being that kind of friend. Join us next week on Scripturology as we go back to our regular teaching format and break open a brand new study on the book of Exodus.